with you today to tell some stories, uh, particularly a story of the Super Bowl experiment, and also supernova connections to the Super Bowl uh, collisions. So we'll have a you know, fairly light lecture today with some fairly elementary stuff, but some of it we're going to use for the rest of the, of the course in various sometimes surprising ways. The main thing I want to just show you um, is what was behind the simulations that you uh, um, have been looking at for the last, um, uh, well, at least two lectures. And the uh, idea, of course, is that the computer itself is, is using a, a computer algorithm called the Rungakutta Rungakutta 4 is actually our favorite. That's the workhorse for um, dynamics of any kind, quantum classical, you name it. And the, uh, the idea is to make it so that it uh, conserves the energy, if that's what you're uh, looking at in a classical mechanics problem. And that way you have a quick check of whether it's uh, got the right step size and all of that. We'll talk more about that later, but the first thing that you have to feed into a a computer program is a force law or a potential law, and that's the main topic today is this uh, uh, actual potential uh, that the uh, Super Bowl makes with first the floor and then with each other. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and make some um, extreme examples of uh, collisions that involve potentials, and I've always been somehow weirdly fascinated by people that do daredevil diving at 80 feet uh, into a kiddie pool. And how do they survive that? Uh, what's involved in, in uh, the, the force potential ener kinetic energy uh, for a human being that's crazy enough to do that and do it uh, again the next uh, day or so in some uh, performance of some site. Um, so we're going to look at linear force, nonlinear force, and um, make some uh, statements about, uh, well, uh, exercise two today. What, you know, it'll be interesting to see how many of you came up with what we uh, think. And that's going to be the topic uh, right here. Here's where I'll tell us a, a story of sort of an allegory, a parable of the uh, Los Alamos Laboratory versus the Livermore Laboratory, and I've worked, lived through both of them, and they have their problems, as any government agency uh, would have, but I'm going to imagine a very simplistic view of them. It involves this, if this were something that they were working on. So th that'll make a neat story, and then we'll go ahead and talk about some other people, like Sterling Kogge, who is the guy that really thought about how supernova mechanics uh, works and he had access to very large computers at, La at Los Alamos when he was there. So um, that's it. Uh, let's get started. Uh, the basic thing that I uh, want to do here, and if you need to see the original paper for this thing, that's at, that's right up front uh, on the second sheet here. But the, um, there's some other things that go with that that I'll mention a little, a few of them. But in any case, uh, right here is some of the oldest geometry that we know of. And this is a ge geometry associated with, with Thales. Thales lived in Turkey, which is across the bay, sort of from uh, where uh, Athens uh, would be. The Greeks are not too far away. And he was uh, there and other places. And as I mentioned maybe before, when we mentioned 600 BCE geometry, He's the guy that worked out the um, surveying geometry that was needed to um, make it possible for the Nile Valley to prosper and not be involved in property uh, wars all the time. In any case, the basic idea here is he showed very quickly that um, any uh, angle, uh, any point on a circle subtended it a 90 degree angle with a diameter, any diameter. So that, you know, at first if you were asked to, to 
prove that really quickly here in order to get an A in this course and you had only a, a, a less than a minute to do that, would, would you be able to do that? And I will tell you the answer right now, the basic idea is, uh, is, is to put these two together into a rectangle, which you know is a, has 90 degrees. The, the, uh, that sort of theorem is proved immediately. In any case, the, the thing that we need is to figure out uh, how big is the area that a Super Bowl um, makes as it touches the, the ground. And another Super Bowl that uh, is a, a similar problem to this. But the basic idea is to imagine the ball has been flattened by that much and relate that in a formula that gives you the radius, the radius here, of a circle on which the Super Bowl is actually touching, pushing uh, on the thing. And that way uh, we can get some idea of uh, force that this thing feels as a function of that uh, uh, distance x of penetration, the penetration distance. And uh, the basic idea that Thales uh, came up with after he got that amazing idea of, some of 90 degrees some tension is that you can uh, give a formula for this very nicely because this right here, you didn't call this this, but the Greeks later call this the mean, uh, the geometrical mean of these two numbers. That is the square root of the product of the uh, diameter 2r minus the penetration times the penetration. And uh, that r uh, this thing right here uh, is that geometrical mean of x penetration and 2r minus penetration. And uh, for x much smaller than uh, the radius, which we will be mostly considering here, uh, that boils down to this. And this is a formula that you may or may not have seen when you took your optics part of physics. Uh, they would assume a circular a lens, and you would figure out uh, the geometry that you see here for that. So this is really seen mostly as an optics thing, but it's really neat that it works for us here uh, in the uh, geometry here. The equivalent triangle, uh, x to r, this thing right here, uh, is, a, is a similar triangle right here, r uh, to uh, 2 r minus x. That's uh, another way to state Thales' uh, geometry. Okay, well, that, that out of the way, let's just go ahead here and figure out what the force uh, would be. Now this is an approximation uh, that would work for a balloon. If we didn't push it too much, if we didn't change the volume at, at all, uh, we're going to be able to um, calculate uh, just from pressure times area uh, the area being that pi r squared, and uh, having gotten that uh, from the product of the big radius and the penetration. So there's your formula right there for uh, force as a function of the penetration, and it's our uh, uh, the physicist's favorite uh, force, that is the force that you get for a harmonic oscillator. Now this is assuming this thing's a, a balloon, so the pressure, and that the pressure isn't changing, I haven't pushed it that far. Um, but it's Hooke's Law. This is a good old Hooke's Law um, example that uh, is kind of cute. And um, furthermore, the thing that um, we, uh, we call the spring constant in Hooke's Law is being uh, given to us here. So that, that's a kind of name. It's just pressure times 2 pi r, big R. And that's kind of neat. So that would be uh, all we'd do if it was just a balloon that we play with. But we're playing with something that's a little bit more substantial than a balloon. And um, the incredible rubber, rubber without side chains, so it doesn't waste energy of these uh, objects, the super balls, which as I mentioned to you, uh, were discovered quite accidentally. They were do trying to make something else and they got um, something that looked awful. It was black, kind of like this. And, it was, and they just said, oh, they threw it into the dumpster and it went into the dumpster and went, -da 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 -da, and came back out again. 
and fortunately it was somebody that was looking uh, for things that were interesting. This is Wemo Manufacturing Company, and he said, hmm, I don't, I'm not going to worry about that thing I was told to make. I'm going to worry about how we got this. And that's how the Super Bowl uh, and the high bounce balls that you play with uh, were uh, discovered. And this was 1963 or something like that. So it's quite a while ago. But uh, it's an amazing thing uh, uh, that uh, the, this was uh, became part of our, our lore. So um, if I continue uh, with this, um, this, or if I make this thing uh, go a, a big distance, if I just let X sweep across the whole ball until it's all crumpled up into one pixel, well, you say, well, how would that ever happen? Well, when we talk about supernovas, all kinds of things happen like that. So uh, it's not quite out of line. But anyway, just for a mathematician's sake, if I work out uh, the integral of the area pi r squared, over the x distance, I should be getting the volume, right? So that, that's an, an important thing about this uh, thing to go a little bit further with our uh, formula for uh, the uh, force. And um, just to check that the integral that we're uh, doing here uh, gives us the right answer, we go ahead for uh, x uh, here, the penetration decimal is less than r, we've got that pi r uh, x squared uh, working for us. But if we go all the way, if we, x goes all the way to r, so it's completely crushed the ball into a pixel on this side, uh, we've completely eliminated the volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that, that checks. That lets you do a real quick check uh, that you're doing the, um, the volume uh, right up to that point. And that's interesting because you see the super ball force depends on the bulk volume modulus. And this makes a nonlinear force. That's an important key thing that we're going to be talking about uh, later on and associated with that. Uh, a question about uh, why does an independent bounce model work so well? But the other thing that's true is in a, uh, from case to case, this also depends on velocity. This stuff, this, this crazy uh, rubber here with the side chains is, is very similar in its behavior at high uh, knocks, forces, quick uh, hits to the thing, is, is similar uh, to a uh, nutty putty. You've probably played with that gooey stuff if you take the nutty putty out and put it down, it sort of oozes out uh, like a liquid, uh, very viscous liquid. But if you take that thing and roll it up and drop it, it is like a super ball. It has almost the same coefficient of restitution as a super ball that Nutty Buddy does. You know, the, the, if you pay for the expensive type, it doesn't have other purities in it. So uh, our volume modulus and uh, the fact that it, uh, adi the adiabatic motion as opposed to isothermal, uh, that's what made Project Ball really Bounce. So that's what we're going to be discussing after page 33. But we've got some other things to deal with before we get to that. In any case, um, the idea of this stuff behaving weirdly at height. Now the other thing that happened after I discovered this, we immediately started playing with it. We well, ran outside to um, try and go up on the third, fourth story and drop it on the sidewalk uh, down there. And we found immediately that uh, when the Super Bowl is dropped from heights. It shatters. So it, it, it behaves like, that's the other thing a Nutty Putty does if you really throw it down. It shatters like glass. Whereas when you let it sit there uh, quietly, it just oozes. So it, these are interesting materials. The study of weird materials is, is, is uh, you know, something I'd do it if I had another life to live. But in any case, um, as we go on here, I want to make it, it sure, make it sure you see that we do have a nonlinear force to uh, work with here, and that that is important. So, uh, when you play with this on the computer, and we have these controls here for you to set various things, and they're, this is very rudimentary. There's a lot more we could be doing with this, but um, just having a little bit of friction, we, I showed you an example, we put a little bit of that in, 
this is very trivial, setting the gap between the balls. And the question is why when the gap is zero, does, does our experiment work? Uh, uh, and work quite well. And um, here's the force constant. If you're going to raise the power law, now the thing that I, I guess I skimmed over pretty quickly there, I should go back here and point out uh, that the force law that we're talking about here, uh, <clears throat> this is the, the hook law, but what we're getting here uh, for our uh, force laws is the penetration squared. That's the, the, the force. Uh, uh, that uh, the change in volume, is a bo there's a bo volume modulus that will be something multiplied by the square. Okay, so this is a nonlinear force, uh, very, very much uh, so. And it's worse than non quadratic as you go into the, uh, uh, the adiabatic uh, region. So we, we've already spent time talking about two different kinds of forces uh, <coughs> there uh, with respect to that single particle bouncy guy. Uh, that we did last lecture. In any case, this nonlinear force is uh, the key uh, to this effect that we're dealing with. And we'll show that by changing uh, some of these constants. We'll take the force law constant back to 1. If you do set the power law to 1, uh, it's probably a good idea uh, to um, decrease uh, the k's that we use here, maybe something like that uh, for the k. Anyway, it's free. It's not going to blow up the computer to put any number in here. Uh, it may give you erroneous results, but um, it, it's pretty robust. It's just, and, and it's getting better as TC and I work on He's doing most of the work on getting these programs to work. If it locks up, reload. Yeah, that's, that's like the thing a web about a, dr a browser. No <laughs> problem. Re restart. I'm not going not to bust anything. Um, if it was an analog computer, I'll talk about those later. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch it out. They can blow those up. But uh, digital, pretty hard to actually do damage to things. Anyway, here's the, here's the um, picture. And this is just the elementary picture of um, the forces, the potentials, uh, all at once, drawn all at once here. Now let me set the stage for the geometry. And we're going to be using this throughout the course whenever we talk about um, something in, that's a potential and force field. The next thing we're going to do is uh, imagine things outside of the Earth and things inside the Earth just due to gravity. But whatever it is, we're going to have some kind of a curve for the potential. Okay, And if it's a harmonic oscillator, that curve is a nice parabola. Um, <clears throat> that uh, curve, u of x, will at every point have a derivative, the slope, Okay, of this plot, u versus x. So basically du dx, but we're looking here at the actual ratio of the triangle of delta u to delta x. And that would be exactly, if we got it right, to the slope of that particular point, the derivative. Okay? And that is supposed to be the force. So what you do, uh, and the force has to be in the direction of the coordinate. The u is a potential plot, so can't go be going in that uh, direction with the force. The force has to be uh, there, and that force would be uh, having a tr uh, the, the altitude, say, or the base of a triangle, where I put a constant here, like one there. So the idea is this is a similar triangle of f of x to one is equal to this triangle right here, and that's because uh, this has to be normal to the hypotenuse of this triangle. So this is just a clever way, and you'll see the uh, animations always drawing the particle and its force, and then this will be constant as it moves. Let's show this just to see uh, what I'm talking about here. Um, I will go ahead and uh, start this particular simulation, which is a right after this page here. Um, I think we'll go. There we go. Okay, so there goes a the ball. And it starts with zero velocity at, at having a certain total energy, maintains that total energy, but the energy consists of both the potential due to gravity, if there, uh, if there uh, is 
some, and that's what we've got here. This is just the force of gravity letting this ball fall faster and faster and faster, and then it starts to uh, get penetrated by the floor, and everything here is ball being penetrated, and with a nonlinear force. This is a very uh, nonlinear uh, force. Now the force itself is the yellow line. And you can see that the force would be zero right at that point where the potential has zero slope. So he's going to pass me right there. Okay, is where the uh, force uh, curve crosses the, the uh, x-axis, and um, it should be zero uh, at that point. And then this, because it's not wasting any energy, we haven't turned any of the friction on here. Uh, this thing will maintain the uh, same uh, total energy. With the friction on, uh, it starts to go down, but only, the friction is only designed to show up when the ball gets bent. So any, impen any penetration is accompanied by some amount of friction and can adjust that uh, to in these programs. But right now we're just going to do the purest uh, examples of this. And I just want to make clear uh, how this geometry works. This is something that would you, if you're going to, uh, you've got some of you guys are going to be doing U UP physics. Welcome to use these things as showing uh, the uh, students how forces and potential work. We're doing sophomore physics here, just uh, with uh, some extra twists to it. Okay, so uh, let me um, go ahead just a little bit on this one here. Uh, to, and this is from the old programs before TC came along. This is old Mac programs here. See all the pixels. Um, the 1990s when I started trying to get you know, teaching improved by actually seeing things in motion. Um, what I would like to do is switch over to a picture that involves that. But I, you might as well look at some of the old stuff for a minute here or a, a second would be enough time. Um, as I say, increase for nonlinear. If we're going to do nonlinear, you have to increase it uh, to get something to happen. But in any case, here is uh, where you are starting off. And this one, um, I think it's got a little bit lower here, so talk about it easier. Uh, the um, idea is that the force at this point is just the weight due to gravity. So the force right now is mg, mass of this super ball, uh, <coughs> uh, times the uh, gravitational acceleration. So that that is, uh, and just to make sure, I'm going to quickly see if this one is running. Um, well, it's the same as that one. So I, I thought maybe we would rescale it. So that, that, no sense uh, playing right now with that. So I'm going to pause this and come back uh, to the uh, examples because what I want to do is compare this starting at the height, h, and then the point where it has uh, no force on it at all, but of course a lot of velocity it's picked up, and at this uh, point it is uh, all kinetic energy. This is the total energy that it had before has now become so we calculate how fast it's going uh, by just solving that equation where the force is zero. So maximum kinetic, kinetic energy, uh, zero total force at that moment. And the little diagram has uh, turned uh, the uh, thing up, this line up here. So there's nothing left uh, for the F. But it's about to come out the other way to drive the ball away uh, from the floor. Okay, and uh, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, and this line right here is just the giant fall coming in. And you see it coming back and forth there uh, with the uh, coordinate point. Okay, is that clear? Uh, or di di what's going on in the uh, diagrams here? And then finally, here's the maximum penetration. Okay, also uh, zero kinetic energy, but if there's been no friction, we better have exactly the energy started with. So it will always be on that line with respect to that. Now you have this huge force here. You've turned the thing around. And you have, uh, this guy here, normal, uh, there with quite a bit of force. Okay, the maximum 
uh, pretty much that you're going to get in this result. So there's all three of the, of the cases uh, just to make this clear. And this is um, uh, one of the figures in this uh, chapter we're studying right now. Okay. Now, I uh, should probably point out that when this was happening, we could have been integrating the um, force, which goes to zero there, uh, with respect to the distance, the penetration, uh, distance upon uh, the penetration, um, <coughs> the, here's the y-axis, is what was the x-axis over there, and we're looking uh, at the area, so as I integrate uh, the force, I should be uh, tallying up uh, the energy uh, when I get to, to a certain point here, and then I should have zero as a result, and then I have exactly as much uh, integral of the force uh, on this side. Okay, so when we're talking about um, total uh, potential energy as an integral, you have to break that integral in, in two pieces with equal amounts of area, that is, magnitudes of area. But this one is minus that one is zero. That's so the result, uh, the sum of those what comes to zero and makes, maintains uh, the value uh, here. The integration constant is a uh, well, constant, like it's supposed to be, for an ideal uh, thing. Okay, so when you talk about work, energy acquired, as area of the force curve uh, integrated, um, with a minus sign, or physicists, so we have a minus sign here and a minus sign there. Uh, don't let that um, ever go awry until we do the mathematical case, which is the opposite. So, uh, remind you, um, eventually we're doing relativity, and space and time are the same. The, well, it turns out energy and momentum are too. The momentum acquired is an area under force versus time. Uh, curve, okay, and P is to be treated also. It doesn't have a minus sign. F is equal to the derivative, but that, that minus sign is needed because relative, for a special relativity puts an extra a sign on the time as we're going to show uh, later on. Okay, well let's look at some actual crazy results. I'm, I'm mainly focusing here on a um, of the kiddie pool, the, 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 the daredevil uh, diver, okay? Uh, and we could use meters now if you want. Uh, 30 meters here. Now that's a little high. I think that uh, is too much to survive. Um, as I said, uh, 80 feet is the maximum I've seen in television representations of uh, divers. Now this isn't a diver that goes in like this. That would not work well with a kiddie pool. These divers jump off and they land right on the belly from 80 feet. I mean, can you imagine doing that? I mean, I would have thought you'd die. And the, the kiddie pool is not a, a kiddie pool like that. It's a kiddie pool a little over a meter. It's you know, got a nice big circle, and he lands right in the center of that sucker. Okay, and the audience is all sitting there, you know, and actually the audience, uh, the one I saw, they, they weren't more than 10 or 15 feet away. And they all got soaked by the water from him. This is the, you know, how uh, much fun it is to jump in the water and make a big cannonball splash. Well, this is a really big splash that he does. And he, just, he gets up and, hey, that was fun. <laughs> I can't imagine what it feels like. I know, but he... Immune to a uh, thing. So what's happened there is only one meter, and that's about the height of the water, and, and on one meter, okay, he's getting rid of all of that stuff you've accumulated by, by uh, falling from 30 meters. So this area here is equal to that area there, and he's getting rid of it all in one meter. Wow. Okay, that takes a lot of force. Okay, so you're talking about, uh, you know, how much deacceleration. Well, he's getting 
an uh, equivalent force of 30 g, g being the acceleration of gravity, right? Okay? Wow. Well, it turns out NASA did experiments long before the space program got started. They were just starting to worry about going through uh, the sound barrier at the time. And there's a fellow named Colonel Stapp who volunteered to ride a rocket sled that would undergo extreme more than this. Uh, he, they, they took him up to about 50 G. And there's a unit now for acceleration that NASA uses. It's called a STAP, named after Colonel Stapp. S-T-A-P-P -P was his name. And after e the uh, 50 G one, they decided it was over because he was, his, his face was completely full of blood uh, under the skin his eyes he couldn't even see, and uh, you know, he was all strapped into this thing, of course, for, with lots of cushions, so his body was not um, broken uh, anyway, but there was a lot of blood that was coming up to the skin from 50 G's, but he survived, <laughs> and got his name put on a unit we don't use very often, <laughs> but uh, th that was an absolutely essential part of the space program, because uh, there are a lot of times when people were getting many G uh, in uh, the rocket experiments that followed after that. So uh, let's compare that uh, perhaps with um, uh, some, uh, somebody uh, that's doing an Olympic dive. Okay, if you're talking about um, uh, somebody that comes from a... Now, they don't go, um, they don't go 30 meters, but they do go 10 meters. If you go over to Hyper, right, there's a diving tower there, right? That's a 10 meter, uh, I think it's 10 meters, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, that's the highest. And uh, they'll let you go up there, I, at least they used to. I haven't been over there for a long time. But uh, the, the idea, of course, is that the water is about 5 meters more deep. So it's no problem uh, deaccelerating over 5. <laughs> so, so, you, 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 but you are talking now about um, a 6G uh, acceleration, roughly, average, okay? Which is okay when you're in the water and it's not being poked, you know, there's nothing down there to hurt you except the water. So, you know, these uh, divers do that every day. Greg Lugonis, uh is one of the most famous uh, Olympic divers. And uh, uh, he did something that was absolutely, you know, unintended, but in, in spectacular. It was he's doing all these wonderful dives and getting high ratings, and he goes up and does a um, a gainer and a flip right off of the top of the platform, and comes back and hits his head on the concrete of the of the platform, and then this falls into the water, you know, all, uh, you know basically belt belly and back slap okay and I oh he's, he's out he's finished no he isn't he gets up washes up goes up and does the dive again and gets solid tens so it was from death to tens and he kept getting tens for the rest of the thing got the gold medal so wow there's some physics for you that's <laughs> really almost incomprehensible. Now, um, the, other, the other thing is if you have a potential that varies uh, in between there, that, then uh, you, 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 you let yourself have a little bit more leeway. And that's, of course, the thing that you want to have uh, to save your life uh, in the modern automobile on the modern freeway speeds. If you have a collision with things, the cars are really designed to let you have a lot of space to get rid of your velocity, to get rid of your momentum. The more space that you have to get rid of the momentum, the better. As long as you're attached to the thing that's losing momentum gradually, more gradually. That's the frame of the car, right? So, as I'm going to say a couple of times here, uh, fasten your seat belts tightly. And I'll show you uh, more examples of that. But the basic idea is you don't want to be falling through the car uh, at a high G. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else here that I should point out. Um, 
at this point I would like to drop into um, P equal 1, power equal 1. So we'll look at harmonic oscillator tension, Hooke's law uh, dynamics uh, just a little bit here. And then this will set the stage for I can describe what happened in Project Ball uh, better uh, by referring to uh, this particular geometry. Now this one, as I say, has a force power law that's Hooke's law for just one. So it comes ripping down here, a nice gravity pops back up there. Same thing we looked at before, except now we've got a parabola here. That's kind of neat. That's the potential associated with Hooke's law. Okay, it just so happens that the oscillation point would be right out in the middle there. So th this is just a, another thing that we looked at. And uh, we're talking about a linear force law, this linear line here, okay, the straight line right there, is just the force Kx with minus sign. Obviously it's pushing this thing away from down. We're calling that positive and this negative and almost all of the things we've said so far, which is not conventional. But there's your uh, the linear uh, uh, guy. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and um, get this thing. Um, so it doesn't use CPU because we've got other things to do here. Uh, I'll pause it and uh, go back here. And while we're at it, we probably ought to do the same with this one right here. So I think I would like to do a couple of di diagrams on that uh, screen as well. So let's bring this one up to speed. Uh, where we are in our discussion here. There's an integral area of being looked at, and there's the thing we just saw. Okay, so now what we're talking about, and this is a geometry thing that I will be giving you in, a, in the next problem set. Uh, what's interesting about this, and this is not something we had to worry about in Project Ball, but if we had, it would have made things really hard for us. But the balls are pretty hard, so they're more like this. And we don't worry about the little drop-off of the parabola that we were just looking at there. But as you make a, uh, the ball softer and softer, this is a pretty hard super ball here, if you make a, a, a softer one like a balloon, a, the balloon, remember, does have a Hooke's Law force, so it's very appropriate to use this diagram uh, for a um, beach ball even, but um, a balloon would be perhaps better in question of gentle. Um, then you have to worry about air resistance and falling. But in any case, what uh, is interesting about this particular thing is that um, this uh, point right here follows, as we go to uh, softer and softer forces, uh, this, this point here follows uh, a, a curve that looks kind of like a parabola, and that's the thing I'm going to ask you to uh, um, calculate. Very uh, simple problem, but worth thinking about because you don't think about it much when you're talking about the super ball hitting, and it's none of this fancy stuff was anywhere in that project ball uh, at USC that uh, we'll be looking at uh, shortly here. In any case, that uh, is one piece of geometry that's worth talking about. And it doesn't matter whether it is a linear force, any one of the forces is going to have some kind of, of behavior that goes with the potential into the object if the object is soft enough to entertain that, um, <clears throat> that entry. Okay, now, this is where we uh, talk about um, what the nonlinear gives you. You have it, and this is an extreme nonlinear uh, uh, curve, um, <clears throat> you got a flat part. That's what nonlinear really means. Now, you, you should demonstrate this if you have a, a, a plotter and a calculator or anything that can draw curves. Uh, let me just sketch it out here. Um, here we go with a force uh, that's being felt versus penetration, okay, and Hooke's Law, let's just make it um, a nice F equal X, 45 degree line right there, okay, so there's um, F uh, equal, uh, say, 
minus, but we're heck with that right now, minus uh, k, and k is 1 here for using the right units, okay, x to the first power. Okay? Now, if one, that's 1 right there, then there is a parabola that goes up like this to intersect uh, the x equal y curve uh, right above 1. Okay? So you all know about that, and I did a pretty poor job of drawing a parabola, but that's uh, n neither here nor there. But the next one, that would be uh, x to the 2, the next one is going to wait a little bit longer before you can see air between the uh, uh, axis and your curve, and it's going to come up, and uh, 1 squared, 1 cubed, 1 whatever is the same. So this one right here, x cubed, looks like that, and then x to the fourth uh, comes out and is a little flatter in the beginning. I'm just, just sketching this out just for the uh, sake of argument here. And as you go to x to the 100th, it's going to go all the way down here and then go zoom like that up there. Okay, so there is uh, flatter and flatter parts to a power law. As the power law goes higher, bigger flat region. Okay. Well, uh, what does that mean? That means that in our super balls, which are definitely nonlinear forces, more like uh, third power, um, and we'll talk about how we got that later on. But the idea then is that if you have the balls uh, touching each other, they're really not doing much, and the nonlinear force is going to not give you much as you go a little bit into each other as the penetration grow, grow, grows, right? So the nonlinear uh, thing is like having a gap between the balls. And what we did with most of our demos is we, we assumed the balls fell with a, a separation so that this one could get done with its collision before it, uh, it, it changed much of the velocity of the one above it. The ball and the pen, the idea would be that the pen uh, would have a nonlinear force, and for a while it wouldn't know that there was anything going on, and then the ball would come back and hit it head on. So the collisions were independent. That's the independent collision model, right? That we, um, IBM, in independent bounce model, IBM, okay? These are computer companies, uh, moniker, right? All right, so that's what the rest of this lecture is going to be about, is taking advantage of that and uh, the stories that go with it. And the first story is Los Alamos versus Livermore. And I'm on Los Alamos' side because I spent more time there. Livermore was uh, a different level entirely. They just had more money. They, had, they, they were in contact with the uh, money bags in Washington, much better than Los Alamos, but Los Alamos was a bunch of people out in the, out in the desert. And so, uh, we start off with the rum company here. Um, what they do when they investigate the Super Bowl experiment is have this geometry that's on the board here still uh, to figure everything out for them. So they're using rudimentary, more rudimentary methods uh, to analyze uh, this phenomena of the, of the bounce, the extreme bounce. And um, the other side of the story, up in uh, near San Francisco, we have Crab Corp, and uh, this is the Star Wars division, and this is the lecture no, lecture slide that they would present for what they had, and they had actual computers that worked wonderfully, and uh, did all the stuff that we've been doing on the board here, and uh, they're able to very easily solve a problem of any force law with no uh, initial gap. In other words, their balls uh, can sit right on top of each other, right next to each other, and produce. And what's amazing is, in this case, with a power law, the velocity uh, throw factor really isn't that different uh, for, 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 from this one. But the curve is really different. So uh, the, uh, the uh, Livermore people would say to the Los Alamos people, boy, you guys are wasting your time, everything you're doing is wrong. Uh, Except for the results, you're getting a, you're close to the, the same results, but um, you know the whole idea is it, screwed up. 
So and that's kind of what happened during the isotope separation programs. They had their atomic vapor methods, we had molecular, um, yeah, you know, turns out the molecular one, one in the long run, but that's a whole nother story. In any case, what I'd like to just show you real quickly here is the actual uh, result here of a zero gap uh, simulation. Okay, there you go. Bavoom. Okay. So, uh, here's where the nonlinear force allowed pretty much the collisions to be independent. And we got not 2.5, which is what we are seeing uh, for the uh, um, for the result we did with a super ball that had a 7 to 1 ratio. The 7 to 1 ratio uh, wound us up uh, right at uh, uh, 2.5 on the, on the scale. It was a line that would go right through there. So that is um, not too different from what we're getting with this fancy pants computer here that can work out uh, th these results. Now at this point uh, at, at say you have a meeting between them and these, we go to the same scientific meetings and we usually solve our differences uh, by just you know over a uh, beer or, or something and here's what would happen in this case if I imagine this allegory uh, to continue to that point was um, here's the settings that you use to, to make that here's where I am going to um, show you what happens if we have Hooke's Law between these two. The, the, this is um, uh, really quite, um, for us, uh, surprising. Look at that, no throw. See it again? I'm going to get the mouse here untangled. Reset t equals zero. Watch it. See the little arrows in there indicating the force? Perfectly balanced. Hardly throws it at all. They all do differ in velocity very slightly. Of course, after that, it all goes crazy. But now, independent collision model is going to be working most of the time. You see how the linear thing behaves really amazing. Now, what, what I would like to point out uh, here, I'll go ahead and do it one more time and then pause it. When I first did this experiment that let me discover this uh, this throw effect, I expected them to stick together. I expected what you're seeing here, not from any uh, being a genius or anything, no, I just thought it would stick together. Okay, I didn't realize that the independent uh, collision model was going to work in my face. I uh, here see that if it was a linear thing, it would have done what I stupidly expected. Okay, so that that said, I um, uh, point out how uh, you know why that nonlinear linearity is so important uh, to making uh, this effect work. Okay, uh, let's see if there's thing. I'm going to try to bring this guy up to speed. I think there are a couple of things that we'd like to show uh, together. But this one kind of nails it right here. This, this little picture here, the, the, <clears throat> the no throw occurs with the Hooke's Law force, linear force. is very much uh, the, resi the uh, thing that's needed in order for that to happen. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead here and point out really the, the key thing. The flat part, nonlinear force, gives this explosive effect. If you don't have that and you have this hole, then this is what you get. And that's kind of kind of neat. So a little bit of a you know physics. Now, where where does this um, play a role in this thing? I just realized I put away the thing that I need to um, show this with. So you see. Um, Anybody see Newton's balls around here? Good. I forget where I put that uh, thing, but you've all seen the hanging uh, thing. I can't remember what I must have done with that. It's got to be somewhere right here. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It always managed to hide uh, wherever. But after a cleaning session. 
Yeah, Oh, good, 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 good. So, here, here the deal is, and the reason people make these things, is that it doesn't do uh, uh, that. Uh, when I uh, pull this guy out here, I better turn around so that the camera can see it, but when I pull this guy out here, one guy pops out, right? <laughs> okay? I mean, then you sell these things, right? They, people buy this. It's, it's a fun time. You put, pull two back, and two pop out, right? <laughs> pull the whole row back, and one pops, right? They're going the other way, right? Okay? Now, that is not possible if the force in there was a hook's law. It would make a mess. So I'll show some examples where it does with the whole, this thing, with the whole thing going, okay? So, uh, each one of those collisions has to be finished transferring momentum before it gets to put it into the next one. And it takes a nonlinear force to do it. So it's, it, it, it would of course work if there were gaps between them. But the thing is that the nonlinear force puts an effective gap. Okay, now just out of curiosity, uh, now that all the homeworks are in, how many people, just don't be afraid to raise your hand, if you figured that out, did that occur to you? Let me see. And if you, if you interpret my answer a little bit, it could potentially interpret to something like that. Well, I'll be but gentle on grading, <laughs> but uh, you, you see there is a very solid answer for how this thing could work. And with the one-third, uh, take almost all of the energy out of the ball, right? Remember that when you do three to one, right? you got to have the nonlinear force do that. So, cool. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's see if I can um, say anything more to this. This practical no throw is, once again, this lesson. When you're out in your car, you fasten your seatbelt tightly. Okay. You make it so it's a linear force, it's gradual, uh, that you're going to be deaccelerated by. And and be a big difference from having it loose and you go, uh, you know, 4G and then hit, right? And possible death, right? So um, make a, you know, make that a part of the thing. Okay, it's time uh, just to mention what happened in the Super Bowl uh, experiment. It wasn't all roses all the time. Um, <clears throat> I did it because the students really looked bored with the labs. At least some students came and said they were bored with the labs. And then one, uh, several of the dental students came with, they didn't have this whole thing made like that, but uh, this is what we use uh, as a drawbridge to get out of the way of the pen when, when, uh, flying up. <clears throat> and the idea of the whole project was to be able to figure out what happens with multiple. That will be uh, the remainder of, the, of this lecture, but let me just very quickly go through <coughs> uh, this, uh, uh, Laura. After we started doing this, it caught attention, and it, it, for some reason, it, it was, first of all, it was called Project Ball, it was the, uh, you know, 60s, okay, so everybody thought it was sexy, but um, people thought it was neat because we put that on the door, Project Ball, room 69, and it happened to be I mean, you, you, you catch attention however you can, and sure enough, it, uh, this ended up on Ray Duncan's report on NBC. Uh, <clears throat> and you got to realize this is the era where really only about four uh, television channels total in L.A., okay? So at night when people are watching television, it was very probable that they would be looking at NBC, which was the biggest broadcaster. And this guy was a real card that, he played, looked around for interesting things and he caught a, a sight of us. Now the mechanical engineers had kindly uh, measured the Super Bowl force law with their, they had a really neat tensometer that let us uh, get the curve so we could calculate and, and it, we had this fancy pants analog computer. We didn't have a digital uh, at that time uh, that would do this, but we had an analog that we could wire up and actually simulate uh, this uh, stuff that we had been doing, okay? So here we are in room 69 doing all this stuff and 
most of the time we're just screwing around. I mean, it was kind of cheating in the sense that they didn't have to do the dull lab, but, you know, they, they were learning things, and it was, it was looking pretty good. Okay, except then the building from ground decided that room 69 needed painting. It was in the oldest part of the building, and we had to get out. And so, uh, what was I going to do? And not only that, but that was about when I realized this experiment is failing. The uh, results we were getting from analog computer, they were not fitting mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So here I was, if you let all these guys out on the end of the diving board, see, and then it's going to break off, you know, and you say, well, that's science. It doesn't <laughs> really work. You've been kidding all your life. It's fake news. Right? I, I, you know, I couldn't say that. Uh, but um, I figured that maybe we'd take our attention uh, uh, and actually go down to Whammo and see. And I talked to the Whammo guy. Uh, he said, yeah, come on, that sounds interesting. Maybe we make product. And so we had to, I, everybody had dollar signs in their eyes. And uh, we figured, wow, you know, we're going to be the next, uh, the next cool toy. So we got a car kind of by we went down to San Gabriel. And uh, the, by the time we got it all set up, the, uh, it was the day in which the San Gabriel um, Whammo uh, inventors were doing alpha waves. And that, it was thought that if you put this a thing and measured your alpha wave, you could do that uh, pretty easily with uh, just a, a, a couple of you know, things like an electrocardiogram. And um, the idea was if you could control that alpha wave, you'd, you'd, cr you'd improve your, your creativity. You see, and you think up new new things, right? So they they spent a lot of money on that, and they weren't going to uh, much of them were going to take time off from something important. But we did get to talk to the lawyer, uh, who you know kind of really ran the place, and he said, "Gee, that's an interesting thing, but it is not probable uh, for us. We can't do that. It's dangerous." And it, and it was. I mean, we had this little thing that was going to shoot a space shuttle. Uh, 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 you know, up into the uh, little styrofoam uh, mm -hmm. rocket and thing that was going to shoot it up. I figured that was pretty safe, but no, it, it goes fast, and so you can put people's eyes out if you don't do that. Now, Feynman's suggestion at that time, I, a student of Feynman showed this to him, and he says, wow, we can do a ceiling dartboard. <laughs> well, that isn't going to go anywhere either, because you don't want to have a dartboard that goes vertically uh, into people's eyes. So. We were really bummed at this point because it looked like our dollars were not going to materialize. But he, he saw us looking sad, so he gave us a box of all kinds of these uh, failed Super Bowl things that they had tried to make with many different sizes and shapes. And we've been tearing our balls apart, uh, Super Bowls apart, uh, while doing experiments. So we're glad to have some. We didn't have to buy uh, a whole bunch of new ones. And, um, and back to room 69. And some of the guys, they're holding well, they just sort of dumped them out on the floor, and then they started bouncing all over the place, and of course they hit the paint on the wall. Now, why is that important? And it's the only time that I had an instant solution to a problem. It usually takes me months to get something solved, but this is where I saw it immediately. Those little circles uh, that were being made on the floor, messing up all the paint, just paint circles on the wall, circles on the floor, were the contact circle that I just showed you in the very first slide. Okay, it's this guy right here. So what you got to do is take the Super Bowl at different heights, try them at different heights, each time figuring out what your uh, energy is from MGH and then what's the size of the uh, penetration. So if you can plot the penetration versus that and then take the, 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 uh, the <coughs> der derivative, you're basically looking at the potential, now you're going to get the force. And that's what we need to put in the uh, fancy pants computer. So that was the solution to what was going to be a completely failed project. So the computer theory started to match uh, this is force and potential, just to show uh, what the curve was. That, that worked well enough to fit the uh, results, both of the ball and the pen, uh, <clears throat> for quite a few ratio, mass ratios. All right, it starts to go hell here. That's expected because of friction. We weren't doing a very good job of keeping track of. So that let us do this guy. That let us do calculations of this guy. And this guy is this guy. Okay? And what this is is 
it's pretty clever. We didn't actually have a little thing here to catch the last one on the next to the last one. But you see that, that, that this can't come off. But it doesn't have to uh, uh, go very far when you drop the thing. Okay, and you can play with this later, but I'll just try to drop it straight. That was a lot of go kick, home right? Lane, right? Okay, so this really amplifies. That that's the the, the sort of the message that um, we already knew that, and um, <clears throat> I'm very happy to see that they didn't lose <laughs> this part of it. <laughs> they, when they sell you this. Uh, they give you four or five of these things, and we're down to two now. So, uh, we're, you know, the, we can take that outside. It, it, I mean, usually it's gone <laughs> when you do this. Okay, so uh, it, it's pretty spectacular. So, uh, what I point out to you here, and these are <clears throat> with uh, three uh, balls, and we'll go ahead on this one so we can get a, a good uh, simulation going here. <clears throat> you can see that that limit of three that we were talking about for the two ball experiment, remember, remember that, and that mm -hmm. required you to have a tiny, tiny, tiny projectile, and then in that limit you could approach three uh, times the uh, velocity, okay? Um, that uh, <coughs> is uh, easily broken now, okay? The, the, um, I will go over here and see if I can get that. So, and, and this is with a nonlinear force, okay? Of course, because when you put them together, they're going to f pretty much finish their, their collisions with whatever's below them before they do much to the whatever's above each one. So this, this thing already here without any, any adjustment is, is beat the three record. And it's just a normal size. I'm not optimizing this thing at all. So th that is the, the key uh, to this. And um, you get a pretty good, we didn't have this little clever thing. Uh, I still haven't published that. Uh, maybe somebody wants to join in and do that. But it's really uh, pretty easy to figure out what this is. You do the first collision. If it's an independent bounce model, uh, you just take the ratio of the first uh, pair, 100 to 30, Okay, and go up and uh, do your ruler and compass thing, get a value. And then you just go over to the 45 degree line and down to the baseline and, and do the next collision with whatever slope it is. Okay? And so it goes up, you know, to say there. Okay, if you draw the arc. So here you see we're getting pretty close to what this particular case uh, had with 130 and 10. Um, that's kind of neat. Now, once again, this isn't going to work very well with a linear force. Okay? Here come the in contact, all right? Not much of a throw. They get this particular one, they actually separate, but the, nobody's going to pay you for this. Okay? Um, that's not throwing uh, the balls. So, um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and get back uh, here and um, mention that. Now, the uh, <clears throat> basic idea of having this and more is a key to a lot of physics. If you ask, how does a trumpet work? Okay, it's kind of the reverse. You're talking about a large volume of air here and a smaller volume here, but you've got a couple this is called for you as you are electrical engineering um, minor, major, whatever. Uh, this is called impedance matching. As you, as you gradually uh, change the um, thing. I'm going to give you some problems where you figure out what's the optimum for uh, something like that. Okay, so the optimum idler problem is it's a nice calculus problem, but it's also one you do by geometry. Anyway, all of this comes down to the uh, real heavy physics, the super physics that goes with super balls, and that's the supernova. And the guy that's responsible for that, and I should probably show a picture of him, which I will in a minute here, but the basic idea is that um, stars spend a heck of a lot of time 
<clears throat> duration, 10 million years, a million years, a thousand years, then for three years you're bringing this stuff up, oxygen and magnesium, and then just for a, a fraction of a year, say a couple, four months, uh, you're cooking up silicon, sulfur, argon, and calcium, all these heavy, semi-heavy atoms, and then in just five days, uh, nickel and iron are starting to build up. And then all of a sudden, on one moment, the whole cooker shuts down. That's the model of this type 1A supernova. And now what you've got is super balls, but in every direction. You've got the light stuff, and then you've got the heavy stuff. So it all falls in, and it really falls fast. This is relativistic. Quarter of the speed of light is estimated in the models. It is really horrendous. Uh, this thing comes, and then it goes kabalooey. Uh, the super balls come flying, flying out. Okay, that, that's the rough idea, all right? So, uh, how much <clears throat> credence can we give to something like this, uh, which is described in science by a diagram that this guy uh, thought of uh, as one of the first to really uh, make sense of some of this, okay? Now this guy, he would not be very popular now. He's been, what have we had for people that molest women? We've had Weinstein, we've had Epstein, and we've had Albert Einstein. He did not treat his first wife very well, if you ask Daniel Kenefick, who's a historian that keeps track of this stuff. Uh, we've got, and this guy is pretty bad uh, in that respect. And he got caught um, with a, a co-ed uh, that sued him for giving uh, him uh, or giving her uh, a, a sexually transmitted disease, and so uh, the Minnesota, the University, uh, I should say, the uh, Minnesota Mining Institute and Technology in Socorro, New Mexico, where he was president, uh, said, "Out, or we don't want you around." And um, he proceeded to Xerox his asshole on a, a resignation letter. So, off color aside from Mr. Kogan, but other than that, he's a great guy. And this is the same thing I say uh, for Feynman. Feynman is a tremendous character, very creative and wonderful. This guy w was out Feynman, Feynman because he had an airplane and he was trying to figure out how you made thunder and uh, sometimes got caught near tornadoes. He's a real character. Anyway, he proceeded to get a patent with the, these guys, uh, Holmes and, um, uh, <clears throat> well, Ed Holmes and William Holmes, uh, the father and son, and then Sterling got this patent. But they didn't know that th this is, you know, in 1990, they didn't know we published this. And you can't get a patent for something that's already published. So their patent is null and void. If you want to make this and sell it, you can, you won't get sued. Well, you might get sued, but you won't. They won't want to win. Okay. So anyway, this astroblaster, the seismic accelerator is what it's called now. They they, they copyright the name, of course, but uh, the, the, that's the history of this. Now, <clears throat> let me uh, finish off here, just to um, take some more examples of this effect. This this effect where you get something to go bang, and. Um, um, uh, send you flying. This is a, an American thing. It's stupid. Um, it's called the buckboard, the western buckboard. It's mostly in the west. Uh, I don't know if there were any in Arkansas. Probably. Mostly out in Colorado, New Mexico, and a little bit in California. But the idea was it was a, a wagon, and they figured that if you put springs under the seats, it would not be such a rough ride. Um, and uh, well, that sounds like a good idea, but um, really, it's more like that. And so people were getting killed just going down the road, and I mean a bumpy road, with a buckboard at, say, tw uh, 15 or 20 miles an hour. You a good set of horses that can pull this thing that fast. Um, people were getting regularly thrown into the air. And that's just the Super Bowl effect. Okay, right there. All right. Now you might say, oh, but it's a spring, it's, but that's a non-linear spring. Okay. 
So you get thrown, and it's dangerous. So that, that I think, is, is worth uh, pointing out. Now, <clears throat> all of these uh, simulations here with three, four, you play with those, they're, they're going to do exactly or close to what you saw in a real demonstration. Um, <clears throat> I might as well do uh, this particular guy right here. This is a four tower four, uh, thing that gets... <clears throat> this one is not spectacular simply because they're all the same mass. But it's kind of neat in the sense that uh, the, the, the whole thing gets turned around. They're all the same mass. Now, of course, it might get a little crazy, but it's maintaining uh, its spacing and its velocities are only a little different. Okay, and then it comes down here, has all that. Now this is four atoms, okay? You have a piece of metal that you drop on a floor. It's got a lot more than four atoms, right? Same to the 23 times whatever the mole weight is, right? They're all going to play with each other to turn the whole thing around, right? They've got to. They're throwing the momentum all over the place, right, in order to get turned around. This one's very obviously doing it. So, there's, you know, another example of mechanics that uh, involves, sort of, the effects that you're uh, um, talking about with super balls. Um, let me go back. <clears throat> this is just a sketch of what we, we looked at, how this thing with all of them going down gets turned around. Now those are definitely independent collisions, but with Newton's balls over there, we showed that that's independent, so are these. Okay. So that, I think, is important. I'll go ahead and run this just for the echo, since we have a little bit of extra time here. These are in contact, it's nonlinear force. We get thrown, now this is five. Okay. Five times velocity. Right. Talking about 25 times kinetic energy if you're uh, just dealing with that particular mass right there. Okay. So that's more or less a simulation of what we just hit the ceiling with here in that demo. All right. Now, the rest of this, um, let me um, go ahead and I can just hold it right there and go back to uh, some other things that have this geometry, this zigzag geometry that we uh, we're talking about with monster mash, okay, where zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, 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 infinite, uh, infinity uh, uh, at the bottom there, which you never reach, of course. The harmonic series is very much a part of mechanics, and this is a good example, okay, one half, one third, one fourth, okay, uh, basically things that sum up to logarithmic behavior. So here, this isn't as, as exciting as any of the stuff we do here, but it's worth noting that there's a geometrical construction for Kerensh collisions. I make a whole bunch of uh, uh, items lined up, I'm sorry, cars lined up in a Los Angeles uh, highway where some guy here is uh, once again t uh, texting and doesn't see that everybody stopped. Whammo! And crunch. okay? Most of the cars are good at crunching, so we'll assume they're perfect at it. And then uh, the next thing you do is figure out what the next crunch is, because now you've got two cars moving, and then they crunch on a third, and you know, this goes on forever. Do, 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 do. Okay. So this is just the monster mesh turned over, and we're only using that part that has the crunch occurring at the center of momentum. You do it, uh, uh, have a whole bunch of guys colliding with a single. Thing. This is more common on the Los Angeles freeway. Everybody's going except somebody that stopped for some reason. Very bad. That's crunch, crunch on this side. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. All of this are clever ways of doing the uh, geometry. Now you can have the, them all moving and all stationary and figure out what happens in that mess. As I say, forget about it. <laughs> There's so many possibilities that I haven't been able to make any a thing really cool out of that. But here is one that I would uh, hold up to you just to, to look at. I'm not going to ask you to do this. This is, this is a case where the geometry loses and the algebra wins. Okay, and that, that's the um, thing that I would point out to you. Any new method you get that really works well for uh, versus some other method, 
uh, will be just the opposite in a different situation. But uh, I went ahead here and I figured out what would happen if I start out with a bunch of balls lined up and each one of them has a little charge and it fires off and it sends the first ball back and then the, the collection of balls starts to move a little bit and then the next one fires, boom, so another ball comes off right here, okay, and this is all indicated by these lines here and here's the uh, harmonic uh, geometry that is working uh, to give you that those uh, spacings there. In any case, after a while, about here when it goes pow and blows one back at the same relative speed and making all the same to be simple, all right, well, it's got a, a significant amount of velocity, you see. But what you have to realize is that this is the mechanics of a rocket. This is rocket science. You, you know how people say, it isn't rocket science or some, for something that they don't like. This is rocket science. This is the beginning right here. And it's really depressing if you're interested in going somewhere. If you're interested in getting off of this planet because you've completely screwed it due to the, uh, 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 the eroding climate and throwing all CO2 into the atmosphere, okay? We're not getting off this planet. This is the way we get we're going. We ain't going. We've got to fix this planet. Uh, that, that's for sure. And, and uh, th this is an attempt to show that. And here you see it as a um, logarithmic series. Okay, but you can do all of this very easily with algebra, that's calculus, okay. Here's the basic differential equation that you're solving. That's pretty easy to integrate, that's a logarithm, okay. So what you're getting there is the logarithm of the mass ratio of what you had as a whole rocket vehicle to start <coughs> with what you have at the end, fin versus in. Okay, it's a logarithm of that ratio. Logarithm, and the logarithm just doesn't want to go. You, you